Okay, so when you've got this um, SketchUp opened up, what you'll find is this screen here. And before you actually start using SketchUp, you just want to check your templates down here just to see, make sure we're in the correct one. Now, we can either use woodworking millimeters or we can use interior and production design millimeters or we can use construction documentation millimeters. I actually prefer to use construction documentation millimeters because it brings us in on the top view. So I'm going to select that and then press start using SketchUp. Okay, so that then brings us into this screen here. And what you'll notice up here in the top corner, it has the word top there, which means what we're looking at here is a top view. What I want to do is rather than go through all of this just at the moment, we can kind of learn as we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to start building our, uh, our serving tray. And I thought we might start with the easiest of the parts and we'll start with um, the sides. And you'll find up here a tool which is, well, it says rectangle, but it could also say circle or polygon. So what we do up here is if it says rectangle, we just left click on it. Or if it says one of those other shapes, we just click the down arrow and select the shape that we want. Okay. Then what we do is we'll come down here to this point here called the origin. And we're just going to, I've now clicked with my left mouse button and I'm just dragging out. I'm not really too worried about um, anything at the moment. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to release the mouse button and I'm going to type in the numbers. Uh, so the length of the base is 475 comma and the thickness is 12. And you'll see that appearing down in the bottom right hand corner. And then I'll press enter. Now, your rectangle will disappear. Don't worry. What's happened is it's this works on a really, really big scale. So all you've got to do is go up here to this zoom extents button and click it. And here we go. Here's our rectangle. Now, I'm just going to select this select tool up here. And I'm going to roll my center mouse button out a little bit just so that this um, gets a little bit smaller on the screen. And then I'm going to orbit. And to orbit, you just press the center mouse button and then move the mouse around. And you can see how we're sort of getting a bit of a three dimensional feel here. Anyway, let's get it so that your screen looks a bit like that. And then we're going to push it. So if you see up here the push pull tool, we left click that to select it. Now, see how when we hover over this surface here, it we get these little um, dots appearing. When we've got that, we'll left click that to select. And then I'm just moving my mouse up. And then I'm just going to type in the number 45. And that is the height of our side. All right. Now, again, uh, if, I, if you want to have a look around, you can just press the center mouse button. And it, whilst you're holding it down, you can just sort of move around and have a look at this. All right, so there is a very basic side. And if you could imagine that as being, you know, one of the pieces of wood before you actually cut it. All right, now what we'll do is we're gonna zoom in to a corner here, and I'm doing that just by rolling my center mouse button. And I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna choose my tape measure, or well, the shortcut for that is T. I'm going to click on this edge and drag and I'm just going to type the number 12. No, that did the number 2. There. Number 12. All right. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line. What I'm doing here is the mitres. Okay. So I'm going to draw a line from this intersection point here. And you can see how when you go over it with your pencil, it kind of snaps to it and gives you that little X. So that's great. So I'm going to go from there and I'm going to draw out to this corner here. Brilliant. 
So that's one of our mitres. I'm now rolling my center mouse button to zoom out. And then I can move across by hitting the shift key and the center mouse button at the same time. And that's panning across. So I can now come on and look at this end. All right. So again with my tape measure, or I can just press T to select. I And see how it goes on this center point here? I try to avoid that because it can do weird things sometimes with lines, although it's not doing it now. So in any case, I will try, Control Z, go backwards. I'll, I'll just try to avoid that center point. So I'll come in here, I'll go out like this, and I'll type the number 12. And then again, I'll get my line, and I'll go click on the corner there, and I'll click on the corner here. Again, with my center mouse button pressed, I'll zoom around, have a bit of a look here. Now, this, this is where we get nice and tricky. I'm gonna use the push-pull tool again, and I'm gonna select this part here, click on it, and I'm gonna go all the way down the bottom, there, there's one of our miters. And then I'll press shift and center mouse key to come up and have a look at this end here. Zoom back in again, select that, click on it, push. There we go. So if I go back here to my zoom extents button and then center mouse button and I'm pushed down, I'm just sort of zooming around. All right, that's pretty good. Now, one of the things that happens is, as you use guides over time, you, your um, components can get a little bit messy. So often what I'll do is I'll go up here to edit and I'll go delete guides and they've gone. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna make this into a component. And so how I do that is I'm gonna start up here and I'm going to click and drag a big box over that side like that and release. And you'll see how it all went blue. Now I'm going to right click. Whoops, no, let's do that again. Click, drag, release. Now on it, this is the mistake I made. So get your arrow over it. Right click, hold down. And it says make component. All right, so it's going to give me a name. I'm just going to call it side. and create, there we go. And what you end up with is this box that appears around it. Now there's some really cool features with components like this. Firstly, the first thing is I now don't have to draw another side. Um, I can just copy this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go Control C and now Control V. And I'm just gonna move this out here somewhere and just click. Now you can see it's facing the same way as this and we don't want that. So I'm going to right click on it and hold down and see down here it says flip along. And we're gonna flip it along the components green. There we go. Now see how it's reversed that shape there. One of the things that's really cool about components is, is that anything I do to this component here will change on this component here and vice versa. So if we wanted to change the length of it or the height or the thickness or anything like that, it will change exactly the same on both components. Okay, so now we wanna draw our ends. So I'll just use my select tool and I'm gonna drag over both of my components here to select both of them. I'm going to right click over one of them and hold it down. And I'm just gonna press hide here just so that we've got a clearer screen. The other thing I'll do is I'm gonna orbit, I'm gonna use, no I won't orbit, I'm just gonna use one of these standard views here. Um, I'll work off that to make this um, part of the project. So I'm gonna select the rectangle tool, and if it's not there, just hit the down arrow to select it. So my rectangle, I'm gonna draw a rectangle on the blue and the green axis. And the dimensions are going to be, it was 90 high, comma, and it was 335 long. There we go. 
Okay, so we've got to create a bit of geometry first. So I'll get my tape measure. And what I know is, is that the holes that we're going to drill for our handle, the center of those holes is 35 millimeters down from the top. So I'm just going to use my tape measure and type 35. The other thing I know is that the, it's centered on this face. So I probably should then find the center. So I'm just going to come in from here. And I'm going to take it up to this top edge because what it'll do, it'll automatically find the center. It'll probably go blue. So let's see. There we go. There's the center. Now, the center of the two furthermost holes um, for our handle is 75 millimeters apart. And if we know that this is the middle, then this hole out here will be 37.5 millimeters from the center. 37.5, enter. And I'll do the same out here. 37.5, enter. Okay, good. Now we want to change our rectangle tool by, and we want to turn it into a circle tool. And what we know is the diameter of the hole for our handle is going to be 25 millimeters. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put my circle tool on this intersection here. And I'm going to drag out along this line here. And I'm going to type, now this is a little trap here because the problem is, is that we're talking about a diameter but SketchUp only works in a radius. And so we know that a radius is half of a diameter. So if the diameter is 25, we need to type in 12.5 to get our size. And again, we'll do it over here. We'll click on the center, drag out along that line, release, press 12.5, enter. Now, we need to use our line tool because basically what we want to do now is we want to draw a line from here. So we go click, click, and then down here. So it's basically where the circle intersects with our guideline. Click, click, done. Okay. Now we need to start looking at this kind of curvy geometry out here. Um, for you know that nice curved end of our handle. Now, um, there's a few ways you could do this, and this is only one of them. But again, I'm going to get my tape measure, and I'm going to start on the end here by coming in 12 millimeters, which is the thickness of the side as it meets up with the end here. Now, I mean, there's a reason for me doing this, and basically what it is is I don't want the curve happening in this section here. This section needs to be flat. The curve has to start here. And the reason for that is this is going, this part is what is going to meet up with the side. And I don't, it, I don't want it curvy on top. Now, if you don't understand that at the moment, it'll all become clear pretty soon. So how I'm going to do this, I'm going to go back to my circle tool here. And I'm going to go back to this point here. I'm going to click on the middle and I'm going to go up until it meets this top part here, this intersection. And I'm going to click there again. Click, up, and click. Make sure when you draw that, drag that little pencil up that it goes up along that line and you're not sort of coming out this way because you can get some dodgy geometry if you, you know, don't pull a circle out on an axis. So just go up, straight up that line until you get to that point there. Click. All right, now we need to do some nice curve in here. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select two point arc. And if you can't see it there, click this down arrow and you'll find it in here. So we go two point arc and I'm going to click. I'm going to come in on this guy. You can see when you look at these circles, they're actually made up of these straight segments. So I'm going to select this segment here. I'm going to click on it. Then I'm going to go over to this intersection here, if I just move that a little bit, um, I'll just pan that across so you can see that a bit better. All right, so now I'm going to click there and then I'm going to drag along this line until I get a nice curve. It's probably, probably somewhere in there. You don't want to go too far. You don't want to get it so that it's coming all the way down below this 
this guideline here. You want to sort of keep it on or above it. So that's probably good. We're going to do the same over here. So I meet the same point here, click, and I'll come over here, click, and then I'll just move along this line until I've got pretty much the same as what I had on the other side. Ah, I made a mistake here. I didn't do my 12 millimeters in. So what I'll do here, I'll use my eraser, erase that, use my tape measure, come in 12. Now that's better. Go back to my two point arc, select that point, click there, and then drag along this line until we're sort of sort of happy. Again, we don't want it going down below this line, so we just want to keep it there. And if you want to have a good close look, you can come in, you can just use the center mouse but center mouse wheel, I should say, and just roll it in or out. You can see that's what I'm doing there. I'm just playing around with that. So there we go. So that's a good spot. And then I'll just go click. All right. So now we've got that basic shape. And we need to just then draw. We've got to do a bit of erasing, actually. But before we do that, we've actually just got to extend this line out from there to there. And from there to there. And now we've got to use our eraser. And we've got to get rid of some stuff that we don't need. So we get rid of that bit there. That bit there, we don't need any of that, or that, or that. Oops, I accidentally deleted that. I'll just have to, I can just redo that circle. So remember, that number was 12.5. All right. Now I go back to my eraser and I just need to get rid of eek. We've got a, bit, a little bit of a problem here. All right. So let's try this a different way. Let's meet that there, see if that will work. Okay. E. Yeah, that worked. Okay. All right. So there is our basic shape. Let's orbit around so that we can use our center mouse button. We can a bit of an orbit. So we can see we've actually got a two-dimensional object here. The other thing too is we can use our select tool and select this part here because that's going to be a hole. So we can select it so we get these little dots and just press the delete button and those little dots disappear. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push this out so this actually has a thickness to it. You can see it's getting a thickness. And remember, the thickness is 12 millimeters. There we go. All right. So again, we can orbit around. Um, now let's do our miters on the end. So we'll go for our line tool. There's a miter there. And again, up here, miter there. We use our push tool. And we're going to push that. All the way to the bottom. Now that's done some weird stuff there, so we'll just delete that. Uh, so I just press my eraser. Ooh, that's bad. So when that happens, just go Command Z and go back. We'll just work out what's going on there. All right, there's a there's a little problem. There's a few little problems here. We'll see if we can fix these. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go Command Z to go back here. I'm going to make a line that goes down here. I'm going to try this. Now, I'll push this. All right. Sometimes you get these problems. The other thing I can do, I can do another line that goes from there across to here, and then I'm going to press Erase. I'm going to erase that corner, that bottom corner. That there, there we go. We've we've actually achieved it a different way. And sometimes you do need to do this with this program. Now, I'm going to just try it on this end here with this push and just see. Yeah, we've got a problem. Okay, I'll just press Escape. Press L for line. So I'm going to draw a line that goes straight down here. So see how that's blue? And then I'm going to draw, I'll just zoom in here so you can so you can see. 
I'm going to draw another line. I'm just going to press on that corner there and then click there. It's kind of an invisible line. Um, and then I'm going to go back to my eraser and I'm just going to start delete out this little corner here. There we go. So everything's working the way we want it to work now. Okay. Now, we don't need those guides anymore. So we can go back up here, delete guides. All right. Now that we're happy with that, we'll just have a good look around and make sure there's nothing missing on it. Sometimes you can go underneath it and find that there's stuff missing, but there's nothing missing. The other thing I just want to check, just make sure I'm going to, I'm going to measure that line there. Now that says 55 millimeters. I don't know why it's 55 on the side. It's actually 10 millimeters higher than what we need it to be. So how are we going to fix that? Pretty easy, actually. I'll come in underneath here and I'm going to use my push-pull tool. And I'm just going to take that up 10. All right, now let's use our tape measure again and just double check that. Make sure that that is 45. All right, that's good. Now remember how we hid the sides? Okay, well let's unhide them. So we can go to edit, unhide, and it says all. There we go. So there, there. But the other thing, actually, let's go back. Let's hide them again. Edit, undo, unhide. Because what we need to do, number one, we need to turn this into a component and we need to duplicate it. So I did, be, as before, I just clicked up here, dragged over it, that. Now I'll click, right click on it here and it says make component and we'll call it end. Create. There we go. Now I'm going to go command C, command V. There, now we've duplicated it. I'm going to right click on it. Now, unfortunately, this is all coming off the off the bottom of the screen, so you're not able to see it. But if you right click on it and you go down to in, um, to flip along, we're going to flip it along components red. There we go. It's now flipped. All right. So what I'll do, I'm going to move that. So I'll use the move tool up here. And I'll just click on this corner and I'm just going to drag it out there a bit. Go up to edit, unhide, all. All right, let's start putting this together. Now you can see here that, you know, these two things have kind of crossed over each other. Don't worry about that. They're um, their own components. You can see that this end here doesn't line up. So how about we, we select this component. So I've just left clicked on it. And then I select move. And then I'm going to I'm going to come in really close here because what I'm going to do I'm going to select this corner and I'm going to line it up with that corner there. All right, done. Now I'll go back to select. I'm going to select this component and I'm going to change my view a little bit. All right, so I'm going to press move again and I'm going to select that corner there and I'm going to come over and I'm going to join it up there. All right. And then finally, I'll go back here and I'll press select. And I'm going to select this component. And I'll just come in from the top and move again. I'm going to click on this corner here and then click on that corner there. There we go. All right. Let's go to zoom extent so we can see it all. And we'll just have a look around. Now we haven't done the base yet, but that's probably enough for now. To, to go this far. We can do the base um, another time in another tutorial. All right, so there is the basics of our serving tray in SketchUp.